The first reactions to Black Panther Wakanda Forever are here. Last night was the world premiere three whole weeks before the film is even released to the public. Which, if you're not someone who keeps up when premieres are, that is super early. So the idea going into it was that, okay, this movie must be fantastic if they want word of mouth out this early. And while people at the premiere can't release their full thoughts and full reviews, the first reactions on social media are out. So right here, I've listed the six things that were my biggest takeaways from seeing the social media reaction last night. This has absolutely no spoilers in it. I haven't seen the movie, so I don't even know what happens. I'm just playing off of what people said who actually have seen the movie. And the first big takeaway from the first reactions of Black Panther Wakanda Forever is that it has a great villain. Namor has been hotly anticipated in the MCU and has even been teased in a couple movies up to this point and is a huge presence in the comic book. So it was going to be very important that they nail his character whenever they presented him on screen for the first time. And people were going to be highly critical of this character whenever they see him on screen for the first time. Think about how criticized these films are whenever they deviate from the comic books. I remember just this summer the fact that Gore the God Butcher looked different than he did in the comic books, people had a huge problem with. Well, it seems like from the social media reactions that one of people's favorite parts is Namor. That he's an effective villain, he spends plenty of time in the movie. Uh, the only thing that I've seen that was kind of a critique on him was his motivation was a little weak, which I think they hinted at in the trailer what his motivation is. But look, if they made him an effective villain, it was going to be hard coming off the heels of Killmonger in The Last Black Panther. Fantastic villain. If they were able to effectively follow up that with a great iteration of Namor, then that's fantastic. The second big takeaway that I have is that this movie is huge in scope and kind of feels like a war movie between the Calatan and the Wakandans. However, it is a little long. For those of you that don't know, this is clocking in at 2 hours and 40 or 45 minutes, making it one of the longest MCU movies to date. And my personal opinion is it doesn't matter how long or how short a movie is as long as they're able to effectively use the runtime that they have. And it seems like from the reactions that I've seen, that this movie could have been a little bit shorter. But it does excite me that while the movie's a little bit too long, that the scope of it has increased. Which I was hoping for, for the most part in the last Black Panther movie, we were just in Wakanda, and now we're dealing with the ramifications of them showing themselves to the world and what exactly they are. So I'm glad to see that they weren't afraid to step outside of Wakanda by the looks of it and actually have the Wakandans battle another civilization on this grandiose scale. The next thing that I saw in basically every reaction that I read was that this movie properly honors Chadwick Boseman, which I kind of thought they would be able to do. I mean, Ryan Coogler is one of the best directors working in Hollywood right now, and it's clear that Marvel really cares about Chadwick's legacy. Uh, they came out and publicly said that they weren't going to recast T'Challa right now. Now, they may do it in the future, but right now it just didn't seem like the right time. And so I'm glad that they properly paid tribute to Chadwick Boseman and the character of T'Challa. Which leads me into the next item that I saw in a lot of reviews in that this movie is very emotional. And I can completely see that from the first trailer, which was fantastic, by the way you really got a sense that a lot of these characters are in mourning of losing T'Challa. Seems like a lot of people cried whenever they saw this movie for the first time, so I'm going in both expecting a big spectacle action-wise, but also an emotional roller coaster ride. The fifth main point that I saw in a lot of reactions is that Letitia Wright as Shuri is outstanding. Now, there are a lot of theories running around about who exactly the next Black Panther is, I, I'm not going to say who I think it is, but I think it's pretty clear from a lot of the posters and trailers that we've gotten so far who it is, um, but uh, I think it's very telling that a lot of the praise has been thrown in Letitia Wright's way, which I'm glad to see if the movie did go in the direction of giving Shuri the mantle that she was a good Black Panther and that Letitia Wright pulled off the role. I was pretty nervous about that if they did go in that direction because while I did see Letitia Wright 
uh, as Shuri be a great supporting character in the first Black Panther as well as Avengers Infinity War. I wasn't really sure if she was going to be able to hold up an entire movie. So even if she isn't the only Black Panther, or even if she's not Black Panther at all, uh, it seems like she does a good job in sort of the lead role. But it seems like whenever she's given the bulk of the runtime, which, I mean, it kind of seems like she does right now, that she can pull it off. And I'm excited to see where Shuri goes as a character if she is the main character of this movie. Because really, up to this point, all we really know is that she's a princess of Wakanda, she's super smart, and she loves her family. I want to see the evolution of that character, and if she does become the new Black Panther you know, what leads her to that conclusion? Is there any hesitancy on her part? All the while, no matter what direction they decided to go in in this movie, it appears that Letitia Wright completely pulls it off. And the last and probably the biggest takeaway that I had from seeing the first reactions here is that this is a return to form for Marvel. So what do I mean by that? Well, I think I'm not the only person judging by the reactions who thinks that Marvel's tone has kind of been all over the place since Endgame. You know, they've done more on the horror route, they've done comedies, obviously. But it seems like Black Panther Wakanda Forever keeps the same DNA as the MCU movies of old. And I say of old, Endgame was released three years ago. But it seems like a lifetime ago at this point. That this movie fits tonally with the first Black Panther as well as MCU movies that were being released at the time. Which I am so happy about. I just want a good MCU movie at this point. Uh, Thor Love and Thunder I thought was fine. I know a lot of people hate it. I don't hate it by any means. But it just, it did go way more on the comedy route. And while I think that that's a good element of Thor's character, I didn't need a whole movie of that sort of side of his personality. And then Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I'll be honest, the movie just didn't work for me. There's a certain scene there in the middle that really upset me. Uh, and if you've seen the film, which I'm sure if you're watching this video, you have, you should know what I'm talking about. The way that they handle some characters just didn't mesh well with me, and then the tone there, while I love a good Sam Raimi movie, I thought it just didn't make sense for Marvel. So I'm happy that Wakanda Forever, I guess, takes us back to the days whenever we got two or three Marvel movies a year, and tonally just found a way to mix in together, even if they had Guardians of the Galaxy and the Winter Soldier release in the same year, you got that same through line in a weird way. So I'm relieved to hear about that. By all accounts, it seems like this movie is actually really good. It's emotional, has great characters, it ups the scale action-wise. By all accounts, it looks like Ryan Coogler killed it again. Now all we have to do is wait three weeks for the movie to actually come out. So join me in actively trying to avoid the spoilers that will inevitably leak out about this film. But anyway, those are the six main takeaways that I got from the initial social media reaction of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Is there anything in here that you got from the reactions that maybe I missed? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more. See you next time.